He assumed the office of Director of Cricket for Cricket West Indies, Inc. Today, we're checking in with Vincentian Miles Bascom after the West Indies recently defeated Australia in the second test in the GABA. I got to say it like that, guys, so you understand how great it was. Hi, Miles. Good morning. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. Hi, good morning. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, good morning to your, your viewers as well. Yeah, before I even get into um, just your history with cricket, I mean, we saw Carl Hooper cry. I can understand. I mean, his Guyanese pull through. Brian Lara was also so emotional. What was that like for you, watching the West Indies defeat Australia for the first time in 27 years in Australia? Um, well, it's right up there for me um, with that Brian Lara innings um, um, in, in, in England, wow. uh, finishing the game with the last wicket. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much all the way up there. Yeah, yeah, it, it really was a great moment. So let's talk a little bit about you and just your journey in cricket. Um, you, you started playing um, in school and then on campus, yes? Yes, I, I played cricket um, ever since I could, I could remember. <laughs> I, I um, played in primary school all the way to all the way to university, actually. Yeah. And I um, was fortunate enough to get a call up to the West Indies. I played uh, a T20 match for the West Indies. So, you know, I could say that I've been, you know, um, right the way through the system as a, as a cricketer. Yeah. Why cricket? Of all the other sport that would have been available to you, why cricket? Well, it, it was a family thing. Um, my grandfather and his brothers, they, they had, and his brother, had quite a few sons, um, <laughs> each one, and you know they, they always had a, a heated rivalry uh, between the brothers um, for which side of the of the Bascom family produced the the best cricketers. <laughs> Did your side so win? They played cricket pretty much everywhere. <laughs> Did your side win? Um, it was it it was a heated, very heated contest. Um, it, it's difficult to declare a winner. <laughs> All right, but playing cricket is one thing. Deciding that this is what my life's journey is going to be is something else. Um, so you played, but what would have driven the decision for you to be a part of administration? You've been a part of technical teams across the region. You've been a part of selection committees. And now this heavy, heavy head that you've taken on. Why? Why? Well... Um, playing the game, mm. definitely um, my, my first love. Um, playing for West Indies, um, getting to the level of, of actually seeing and, and tasting international cricket mm -hmm. and seeing what cricket has done for a lot of our, you know, the, the players across the region. Yeah. Um, it was only natural. It, it was always clear that, you know, there's one thing that I was always sure that I wanted to do. Um, when I went to university and I, and I decided to take up a, to do a bachelor's. I didn't know what I wanted to major in. Similarly, when I, when I did my master's, I had no idea, you know, there was nothing really driving me um, to the areas that I eventually chose, but cricket was always constant. You know, it was always something that I was, was passionate about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, it was quite easy for me. I, I could never be too far from the game. Yeah. Man, it, 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 I think oh, the strategies behind the scenes are even more important than what we see play out on the pitch. I don't know if a lot of people understand that. Um, from your perspective, coming from a young cricketer and managing teams and seeing the whole process, um, what are some of the things that you'd like to see happen in West Indies cricket miles that will, and we keep saying this, you know, we want to return to our days of glory. <laughs> what are the things that we need to do? Well, first we have to recognize that we have the talent. Mm -hmm. um, and if there was any doubt about that um, before Australia, I think Shama Joseph would put, you know, end to all of those, all of those questions. I mean, mm -hmm. a year ago he was, he was, pretty much no way on the radar. Right. And, you know, he has just brought us probably the most um, impressive victory that we have witnessed in Test cricket mm -hmm. 
potentially in the last decade. Yeah. Um, so the talent is there. Um, and what, one of the things that I've recognized um, as a student at, at um, UWI Cape Hill is that wherever we, wherever we put structure around our players, we get good results, mm -hmm. right? Wherever, wherever we give them good structure and good support, we get good results. We saw it um, with the high performance center that was at, at Cape Hill, um, the like producing the likes of Craig Bartwaite and Jason Holder, Kyle Mears, a lot of the, the guys who are, are still, you know, the bedrock of, of, of strong West Indies teams now yeah. um, are products of that, of that high performance center. Mm -hmm. um, so what we really want to be able to do is to expand that, that system Mm -hmm. um, that structure across all of the territories so that we can put support around our players, you know, in every territory so that we're producing, you know, we're able to, to harness that talent and, and bring it to its, its full potential. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges I think West Indies cricket faces is the, the balance between uh, performance, but also giving the players time to grow into the game. I remember once we had a great team, which included Adrian Griffiths, Patterson Thompson, Nixon McLean. Um, I think Robert Samuels was a part of that team as well. And, and they all traveled. Young team, didn't do as well. And when they came back wholesale, the West Indies said, oh, we're done with them. And I felt that that was like the beginning of the end for me. Um, a lot of times they say, where are these inexperienced people going? But here we see Shamar showing us that give them an opportunity and they'll do well. Are we going to be seeing um, more of that? You, you may not be able to say right now, but are we going to be recruiting inexperienced, but giving them a chance to grow and flourish before we demand so much of them? I um, miss um, definitely. I think the, the global cricket landscape, you know, has, has changed dramatically over the last few years. Yeah. Um, so we, we have had, and we, Likely, we are likely to continue to have issues of availability mm -hmm. of of players. You know, um, guys wanting to take up opportunities in you know T Twenty leagues across the world. Yeah. Um, but that does provide opportunities for you know for players. A, a lot of those guys who who eventually got to Australia. Um, but but it it didn't just happen like that. I mean, these guys, many of them were on the eighteen tour. Mm -hmm. um, to South Africa, mm -hmm. you know, it was good preparation, um, probably as close to Australian conditions as you could get yeah. um, before getting to Australia. Um, so that would have helped and that would have given the selection panel um, quite a lot of confidence in, in what Shamar Joseph mm -hmm. would have been able to, to contribute to the team because he, he did um, perform well in South Africa. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we want to give them the opportunities, um, but we also want to have a cricket system that, that gives them the confidence. Correct. When they get to the international stage that, you know, they have, they have some experience, they have done it, you know, at different levels, our first class level, at the A-team level, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it does go a long way in terms of confidence is very important. It is. You know, and if you have that confidence going into international cricket, um, you know, you're, you're far better served than if you feel like you are, you know, you're there learning on the job. Yeah. Even though some learning will still have to take place. Correct. Well, I want to thank you so much for speaking with us this morning, Miles. We look forward to just more continued greatness in West Indies cricket. I didn't even get to talk about my girls, but we're out of time. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Director of Cricket for Cricket West Indies, Miles Bascom. That's our Caribbean check-in. Well, he did say confidence is important. We're going to need it because coming up next, a tribute to Dennis Brown on something to sing about. That comes out to the break. <laughs>